mean, are we really believing that all the people blasting FDT by YG in the streets went out to vote for Joe Biden? Do you really believe that? You really think a guy in <laughs> Oakland, California, you know, driving his car down the street with the doors open, drinking in the passenger seat of a car, went to go vote to cast a vote for Joe Biden? You really believe that? I don't. I don't. I'm not no. buying. All of a sudden, these these races start getting tighter and tighter overnight. And I'm just, I think I said the other day, watch by the mor- Trump's up by like four thousand in Georgia. By the morning, he will no longer have it, and that's exactly what happened. And then, little did I know, he would no longer have Pennsylvania in the morning. Because when you, when you're walking around New York, you you have to brush off a bum every ten feet. So I just kind of like, just kind of like, no, not today. Like, uh, <laughs> so I spat on her. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> celebrating uh pouring champagne are we really believing that all the people blasting fdt by yg in the streets went out to vote for joe biden do you really believe that you really think a guy in (laughs) oakland california you know driving his car down the street with the doors open drinking in the passenger seat of a car went to go vote to cast a vote for joe biden you really believe that i don't i don't i'm not buying i'm not buying that like considering trump went up in every category Besides white men, I guess the whites, uh, <laughs> natives, <laughs> even Muslims outvoted Jews for Trump, black, Hispanic, Asian, all increased, and he gets like seventy million votes. Maybe they cheated too. I don't know. But like Joe Biden, and then and then Trump's winning by all these. He's winning by all these large margins. Uh, Georgia was like seven, or South Carolina was like seventy thousand. Georgia was like forty, and then Pennsylvania was like. Oh, and then Michigan, and, and then overnight, let's pause. Let's pause the counting guy. Let's recollect ourselves. Let's gather our <laughs> thoughts. And then by the morning, oh, it looks like it just so happens there was actually just the exact right amount by a couple thousand to defeat Trump yeah. in all these races. Unfortunately, you guys, that's just how it goes. Anybody who's ever watched elections, like all those, all would have been called all those states because nobody ever comes back from a lead like that when there's fifteen percent left in Georgia and 10% left in South Carolina. And all of a sudden they just all come back every single one of them. It makes no sense. Yes. And I was actually, of course I was in Wisconsin and now granted Madison, Wisconsin uh, is absolutely awful, but the little town that I was stuck in, I mean, it was granted. It's a town with a small population. I, I, I would have to look into the actual population, but I mean, everybody was going about their life as normal. Nothing was boarded up. And we're talking about just under an hour, about 55 minutes away from Madison, Wisconsin. Nobody's wearing a mask. Nothing's boarded up. Everything's open. And I actually went to sleep in that little, in that little town feeling really quite confident. I'm like, oh, man, this is looking good. Like, and keep, I didn't even go to bed until I actually, I actually fell asleep fairly early because I was just exhausted from a long day of, you know, driving and car shenanigans. So I fell asleep maybe around like nine, but I woke up at like one or two and it was, and Trump was still up big, big time. Yeah. And I went to bed at like four, you know, sleeping like a baby, like basically sleeping with this hat on, like, yeah, it's going to be perfect. Right. And then I get up and all of a sudden Trump lost Wisconsin. I'm like, wait, hold on a second this doesn't add up and then and then you go back what you know six or eight weeks a couple months ago um i don't know how long ago it was but you have people you have pelosi more specifically blatantly saying well you know talking about this red mirage and you know well it's you're gonna think that donald it's like it's so obvious it's so obvious like well you know, you're going to think that Trump won, but when when it's all said and done, the mail-in votes are going <laughs> to... And it's like, and that... Think about this, right? The way that they put it out there so blatantly, like, well, yeah, you're going to think Donald Trump won, but when all the votes are counted, it's going to be obvious that he didn't. It's very similar to the way that they play the virus, right? It's like, well, the virus is going to kill you. The virus is going to kill you. But now that the election's over, we're partying in the streets. You got Schumer out there taking his mask off. You know, it's like you couldn't even you couldn't even give it. Okay, 
when was it? It was Tuesday. So it hasn't even been a week. And they're already, oh, yeah, like the, all the melon ballots came for Biden. Oh, the virus. Even there was that article floating around a day or two before Election Day saying it's safe to vote even if you have COVID-19. And that was them uh, like I prepping see. it up like, like yeah, yeah, we could tell this is coming to a close. And they knew. They knew. I mean, that's I'm sure you've heard. It. That's why Joe Biden didn't campaign, because it wouldn't matter. Well, they still said they want to put I think they said today that they want to put together some sort of panel to, to finally defeat the virus. And they still want a national mask mandate. If that happens. It's just never coming off. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. And how do you enforce we- that? I, I don't know. I, I, I do not know. Um, you, you got guys like, oh, man, my, my best friend in the world, Andrew Cuomo, who <laughs> for months was, it was like, just come on, just wear them. He still tweet. He tweets every day. I don't, full disclosure, I don't actually use Twitter, but he, he screenshots his tweets and posts them to Instagram every single day. It's the same thing. He uses the same, you know, template and just changes the numbers a little bit. And I have so many questions about that because, A, you tweak these numbers a little bit and you just expect people to believe it. Like, do you really think like, oh, well, today there was 4,352 positive cases and that's 1.2% of the total. It's like, dude, you've been lying to us for months. This is why it triggers triggers me so much is because (laughs) I, I saw it. I mean... I guess that's probably how we met, I guess, is like watching that testing facility and having these people tell me that my job is not safe to go to. Yeah. And they put these testing facilities in, in the hood, in the black and brown community, and then tell you you need an appointment, and then tell you you need a car. So why did you put it in Flatbush, Brooklyn, to help the people of Flatbush, and then tell them you need a car? And then <laughs> have the people working at the site I, I caught this, you know, obviously this was months ago. I don't want to get too far off track, but the guy who, who pulls up and says he wants to get a test on a, on a moped, on like a little scooter, and they tell him, you, we can't do it on that. you got to have a car. And they uh, literally suggest that he takes an Uber. <laughs> My guess is that I'm pretty sure he said that they were going to have this grand plan because COVID affects black and brown people more, that, that he was just like, we got to ha- we're helping black people. Yeah. And then they probably didn't want, they also probably didn't want the numbers to go up because they were already gigantic. So they're like, oh, well, we can't really take people. We, you need to be in a car. More important and, oh, and question. The though. wind. Yeah. The wind. The, the very first day they said it was too windy. And then if you recall, <laughs> they, uh, they told me and, and the lady, this was about, this was about halfway through. So if it opened in the beginning of April and it closed in June, I'd say about halfway through when it was a little, a nice little New York summer storm where it was like 75 and rainy. And uh, I go there because they made the mistake of putting it far too close to my apartment. I go there and the lady admits that they're not testing people because of a thunderstorm. And that's when you realize that they are more afraid of being struck by lightning than helping people with the virus. But why would this, why would wind prevent them from testing people? It's like, don't they put something in the back of your throat? Like, it's a th- well, th- that's a good, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a great question, question. I guess. That's a great now question. You, now your imitation of Cuomo there had a New York accent. <laughs> How come you don't have one? <laughs> because I'm not actually from New York, right? So, oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I only lived, I lived in New York for not that long um, in the grand scheme, right? So about five years. Mm. Um, and I was, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for my time in New York because obviously I met a lot of people. Um, I, I did have a good job. I was able to, you know, survive living in New York on, you know, on one job. So it was nice. And, <laughs> and I was able to hang on to some of the, I mean, I just put far too much money into that stupid car. that's absolutely infuriating. <laughs> Transition um, that into your st- into your story there. So we both went to Trump rallies, or I got to mine, <laughs> and, and I was I will I will say I was inspired by by hearing that you were going. Uh, one of my friends, actually my friend George, who helped me drive 
to South Dakota from Brooklyn, he got back to New York and then drove to the rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, obviously, Fog City Midge has been going to all of them. A lot of my Insta friends have been sending me footage from Arizona rallies and all sorts of stuff. And it was just winding down. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I, I have, for better or for worse, I have a little bit of time on my hands. It's not like I had to go to work that day. So I'm like, all right. Let's do it. It's a six hour drive. I used to drive from San Francisco to, to LA all the time. I could basically do oh, this. No, is, really? Yeah. I didn't Francisco. realize they were that far away from each other. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people in New York don't know even too, by the way. So people in New York, they, they were like, well, you go to LA. I'm like, dude, it's literally like a six or seven hour drive from San Francisco <laughs> to LA. It's not, it's not something you do every day, but that's what, that's what, you know, they, they think, you know, the people in New York think, oh, well, it's like, you know, you hop on a six train from Brooklyn to the Bronx mm-hmm. and it's like an hour on the train. It's not it's not like Well, that. people from Toronto don't want to leave Toronto. Where I live, which is like 30 minutes outside of Toronto, people are just like, oh, I never go out there. Like, you never go 30 minutes outside. I get there's the sense that, like, why would you? But also it's like you, they act like it's some foreign land. It's, yeah. That's pretty ridiculous sometimes. But that's so how it is in the... That's how it is in San Francisco. People that live in San Francisco proper, they're like, well, I don't go to Oakland. It's like, it's, <laughs> it, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's 25 minutes across the bridge, but no, uh, I'm not going. It's, it's, it's very similar. That's what it sounds like, at least. So um, you're going to the one in, what, Madison, Wisconsin? So, okay. So I, I got this. Uh, where I'm, right now I'm in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is about seven hours from, between six and seven hours from Kenosha, Wisconsin. We all. I only know Kenosha because, well, obviously because of that. But I was going to say because of that '70s show. (laughs) Oh, I see. I didn't. I didn't even know about that '70s show. But Kenosha. Wow! um, Unbelievable. And to be honest with you, to be one hundred percent honest with you, I don't even remember. Was it? It wasn't because Floyd George Floyd was in Minneapolis. Kenosha was uh, Jacob Blake. What? What? Why did they burn down? I mean, I, I know there was it's like a war torn city. Solidarity, I think, is why. <laughs> but, it, but it was it was Jacob Blake or I, I forget who the I can't even keep it straight anymore. These things seem to just happen all the time. But um, so, anyways, I'm going. Uh, I'm leaving my place in Sioux Falls uh, to go to Kenosha to check out this rally. I get up super because the rally starts at 6 p.m. But I'm going to lose an hour between my place and Kenosha. I'm going to lose one hour. They're one hour ahead. So I get up super early, um, you know, 530 in the morning, still dark. Uh, and plenty of time, you know, plenty of time. I, I wasn't going to drive 100. I don't have the need for speed or anything like that. I just wanted to do a real calm, get out, you know, get myself a cup of coffee and, you know, stop three hours in for, you know, take a leak, another cup of coffee, maybe a little burger, and then finish the, the rest of it. Of course, that's not how it went down. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I get, um, I get about, I get about four and a half hours in. So I'm, I'm more than halfway there. Um, when the car start like the transmission, uh, it's so easy for me to say it's a transmission now because I know that's what it was. But at the time, I'm definitely not a car expert, so I didn't know what it was. But if I was... Go- <laughs> How old's your car? It's a 2014. And it just just died on you. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's a 2014 that I bought in 2015. So it was one year old when I bought it. But it spent most of the time at my parents' house because I was in New York and I didn't have it. So it was still, my car was living in California and, you know, I was, I I can't say I'm not going to place blame on anyone because it's certainly my car. But, you know, my parents were, I asked them for this whole time that I was in New York and it was still in California. I'm like, just drive it around the block once a week. Take it to, take it to the grocery store, you know, a little bit. Just keep it, you know, like, just make sure that it doesn't just mold over into nothing, you know? Um, So was that why it? broke down because it was underused i don't believe that's uh, no no that's not why i don't believe that's why because after doing a little bit of research i found out that uh between 2013 and 2017 almost every single nissan model except for the suv 
was actually recalled because of something called uh. the <laughs> yeah it's a cvt or ctv a uh, C- convertible variable transmission or something like that cvt i think is what they call it um we try so to they uh, uh, yeah a handful of those have been recalled mine actually falls right into that they actually um, continuously it, variable transmission yes that's the one continuously variable transmission and then you can research the the ceo of nissan who escaped the japanese prison and all sorts oh, of Oh, nice they had like a big lawsuit to get, uh, over it yeah 2012 to 2018 several models of nissan vehicles received the transmission including centra versa versa note a bunch of other yep. ones <laughs> nice yeah so obviously had i known that in 2015 <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, look, you can't win them all. It's basically <laughs> no. that I got sold to women and had I been driving, had I, had I never moved to New York and I was driving the car every day in California it would have happened a lot quicker, right? It probably would have happened a, a year in rather than, you know, four years going by and then, and then it happening in the middle of Wisconsin. <laughs> um, but Wisconsin for the record. Where, where I got stranded, which is still about two hours away from Kenosha, um, was was really nice. And that was, in my head, I'm thinking this is what Wisconsin is all like. That also is not true because this was an, a quaint little town. Um, just, just uh, I thought there's a big lake. I, don't, I forget the name of the lake. The, the town was called Wisconsin Dells, though, but there's like a nice little lake and you can go on these boat trips and play mini golf and, and there's indoor water parks and all sorts of stuff. And, nice. and like I said, nobody was worried about the mat. Nobody approached me about a mask. Uh, there was very few signs even, but if you go just one hour into the big city of Madison, it is insane. Um, everything at Madison, Wisconsin, everything was boarded up in the like the down like the like the hip area kind of like i would compare to like soho in new york like downtown uh city hall um or not city hall i should actually say the the state capital i mean imagine the state capital of wisconsin is boarded up because they think that donald trump is going to win the election (laughs) right so then when he doesn't win the boards i mean They'd be smart to leave it because anybody with half a brain knows that that the AP is not the is not the the final deciding factor of the presidency. Oh, it's um, so stupid! Oh, you know, it's it's absolute insanity. Um, but so I, I never made it to Kenosha, but finding out that Madison and I was getting messages from uh, you know some of my Insta friends, and they were saying like, "Wow, like." Because before I went to the Stop the Steal rally, I was, I was noticing these giant American flags in Madison. I mean, just huge, like, RV park style, like, flags bigger than my, you know, just is the size of my living room, basically, on the side of the road. And people were sending me messages saying, like, wow, that's, that's weird for Madison because they're a pretty hard left city, which I didn't know. I just didn't. I mean, my knowledge of Wisconsin was the Green Bay Packers. Like, I, I didn't, I didn't, yeah. I had no idea what what to think about Wisconsin. Um, so, of course, the car breaks down on Monday. Um, I spend two. I, I I just got back what yesterday? No, Friday night. Uh, I got back Friday night. But the whole thing was a complete mess, and. It's just a little peculiar because even even in Madison, even in Madison, I saw huge Trump signs. I'm talking like billboards for Trump, you know, and like there was some Biden stuff out there. Um, but it was just a little peculiar that he had such a huge lead on Tuesday night. And then when I woke up on Wednesday morning, it had all evaporated almost just like, like clockwork, like Pelosi said it would. And the, the red mirage and everybody on the hard left. So, so I never made it to the rally. I'm super jealous though. You made it. I wish I could have got a, a new hat or something, but it is what it is, you know. Well, we just uh, they released some schedule the weekend before or the Friday before, and it was like the f- whatever five cities he did that day. 
And I was like, this is going to be the last chance I ever get to go to a Trump rally. Because I would have gone to one in like Buffalo or something because that's really close to the border. That just didn't happen, probably because of coronavirus. So we just decided to go, me and the camera guy slash producer Efron. And it was like seven hours, I think, seven or six. And he drives slow. He's got um, some sort <laughs> of, he, he's Dominican. So he's got some sort of weather-based fears of driving. Like this, it was snowing pretty bad on the highway in Michigan. But, like, I still would have went faster. Like, if you you got a new enough car, you can trust it. But he had some nationality-based fears, I'll call it. So we ended up getting into this Traverse City at, like, 1 in the morning. And it turns out that this is, like, um, and I always forget the name. What's the beach in South Carolina that everybody goes to? Uh, Is it Myrtle Beach? Yeah, Myrtle Beach. That town is basically like that. Now, I've never been to Myrtle Beach, but so you go drive into this town, which is like, I don't know if it was like 15,000 or 20,000 people. And it's just filled with these super nice looking small hotels, just had to be at least two dozen of them. And it dawned on me that this must be a party city in the summertime. It's on the lake. It's small. So that's how it looked. So it was a really nice city. We stay at this Airbnb. Somebody parked in our spot. And I'm trying to find the parking spots on the ground. And some guy just out there smoking weed is like, yo, are you taking pictures of my license plate, bro? <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just trying to see. I'm not looking to get stabbed. I'm just trying to see <laughs> the parking spot numbers. And um, not this opposite of a shout out to the Airbnb that we st- stayed at because they had it on sale for $76. I'm guessing because of COVID. And then they had like a $150 cleaning fee. Like who are yep. you fucking kidding with this? Dude, like that. I, dude, I I lived through the whole because when I was stranded in Wisconsin, I'm looking at hotels and looking at Airbnbs, and it's like they they get you in there they're like thirty five dollars a night, and it's like cleaning fee one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, like, yeah, like security who are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. And oh. so we ended up being there from one a.m. to eleven a.m. the next day because they wouldn't let us stay longer. They claimed they had somebody coming in right after, so probably somebody who was at the rally. We get up. We go to a bagel place, eat bagels, and then we see this all this uh, parking lot filled with all these uh, vendors and stuff. So they had like a bunch of vendors, and it was so windy and so cold. And it was where people were getting on the bus to go to the rally. So they drive to this parking lot, park, get on a bus, and be bussed over to the rally at the airport, which is like 30 seconds away. <laughs> but obviously, we don't want to go in with them, with all these people, because we want to get... Uh, super cool press privileges so we drive we go to the airport we're driving around we don't know where to go so all of a sudden we just like let's just ask these state police that are there and the guy's like let's go all the way around and uh or he says go all the way around and you'll see a bunch of cops there and that's the entrance so we go we uh drive in the cops like oh what are you guys here for like oh we're media and he's like you got a press passes and like yeah we got these because we're part of um this press gallery in Canada. I know in the U S they do it by like some places do it by States or they do like the police department. I, isn't that how they do it in New York? The police department's issue press passes. I don't know who issues them in New York. I, I that'd be a question for maybe like a lot. That's what I'm pretty sure I was going to say. That's where I saw it on. I think, I think the, in some jurisdictions, the police force is what gives it the press credentials. So anyways, in Canada that there isn't really, like real press credentials, you can just be part of a press gallery. There's only a couple of them. Um, they tried to keep the main one tries to keep people like us out. So we were just like too bad. We, and we cr- created an independent press gallery, a bunch of different places, created their own press gallery. It's pretty sweet. So that work that got us in and he's like, where are you guys coming from? And we're like from Canada. He's like, Canada. Well, that's pretty strange. Go on in. So it's like <laughs> these, these foreign guys with a press pass you don't recognize just from Canada, send them right on in to the presidential <laughs> <laughs> to the press gallery. But that wasn't it. So we go in and we don't have to wait in line with uh, the commoners. Um, we go nice. to the, we go to the media table, but they're like, you guys got to wait for an hour and a half. I'm like that sucks. But we see a bunch of people with equipment lining up their equipment against the fence line. And for my days in the military, I know that's when you want to have dogs or somebody search the stuff. So we do that and they're about to put it, they've set it all down and they have a dog come by and sniff everything and they're about to put us through. And then some guy who works for the secret service is just like, 
who are you guys? And we're just like, oh, we're pressed. And he's like, no, who are you guys? And it turns out we were almost getting in with Trump's actual team, their actual tr- uh, press team uh, that films their their rallies for them. And <laughs> so, like, obviously a couple of these cops got in shit for just not checking who we were. Uh <laughs> So, because we almost got in with the Trump team, it was weird. So we had to wait like another forty-five minutes to get in with the rest of the press. We had no idea; like, we weren't trying to sneak in or anything because we didn't want to get kicked out. Um, so, like another forty-five minutes waiting, this blistering cold, and we get in. And then w- once you walk past the security gate, they just had a bunch of boxes lined up with merch in them. And surprisingly enough, you would think that people were just going insane grabbing them, but it was surprisingly orderly. And we wanted to grab more. I just ended up grabbing a hat that's behind me. It's probably too high up to see. Wait, you and got the you got the the eagle or did you Yeah. I can just grab it, but I tucked it in so nicely that I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So okay. <laughs> um I would have grabbed more, but we had press passes on, so we're just like that probably wouldn't look good. Yeah. And then I, from that's... one PM to to six PM is when we had to wait for Trump. Um they had like oh, one wow. so heater there. A, so it was. A, it, so you were at. You, so it was. A, it was supposed to start at six, and you got there at one. Yeah, it sucked waiting that long. Wow. I think he was. It was supposed to start at five. It was supposed to be five to six, but he was late by like an hour. So Mike Pence come out, came out and gave like a forty-five minute speech. I don't know how he did it, but he just started on one thing and touched on everything because he's probably done this so many times. But it was really good. We got to stand on the actual like press thing. And all the other press were wearing masks and they're giving us dirty looks. It was pretty funny. And then I did some uh, streeters with with uh, Trump fans, like just random interviews. And they were all so excited. Um, my brother te- <laughs> my brother texts me when the video goes up. He's like, how come none of those people have real opinions? They're all so stupid. And I was like, they had like the reasons why not, they don't want to vote for Biden. But my brother is just this type of guy who he... He doesn't trust any politician, no matter what. He doesn't trust any of them. He's like, not. I don't want to say an anarchist because he believes in working and everything, but he's an off, <laughs> let's call it an off the grid kind of guy. He moved out <laughs> to the East Coast on his own land and he doesn't want anything to do with it. He doesn't believe the process it helps at all. I mean, it, the way we're going, at least here in America, the way we're going, it, it kind of makes sense. I, I I'd be, you know, I can't tell you I know anything about Canadian politics outside of, you know, Trudeau. I don't know, you know, I don't know what the hell's going on up there. Was it, um, <laughs> it was, was it uh, Rob Ford? Is that Rob Ford was the guy, the one who smoked crack, and he's yeah, dead okay, because he was yeah, great the, though. He was the okay. <laughs> he was the Canadian Marion Barry, right? Like he I, was I don't know the mayor. Of, Barry. No, I don't like, know who that is. <laughs> well, he was the mayor. Marion Barry was the mayor of Washington D.C. Like when I was a kid. Okay. Um, of course, I'm not from D.C., but he he got caught smoking crack as well in, in Rob Washington. Ford, <laughs> okay, Rob Ford was the mayor of Toronto, and he got caught smoking crack. He <laughs> he was hilarious. Like poor guy, and the media just attacked him all the time. But now his brother, his younger brother, is the premier the governor of ontario my province and he's i think he's lost a lot of favor in the fact that like how soft he's been about covid and everything i think he's like the the press loving him because he's gone like really liberal he's signing checks to everybody giving everybody he he refused to pay before covid he's given them all money now so the media gives them all these softball questions and anytime he gets an answer a question he doesn't like he's like well i can't answer that let's bring up the doctor's so let's just blame the doctors. It's not my fault, you guys. So I think he's losing a lot of uh, conservative votes. And interesting, yeah. Now, he's, do you think those conservatives, they're not. I mean, they're not going to start voting for like left wing people, right? They, I, no, and that's the same thing. Is the left wing voters aren't going to vote for him come election time? They're just going to be like, "Screw you!" Like we don't, we still don't like you. So that's why it's a stupid mistake. There's. So there's like there's so many parties in Canada. We have our own Green Party. We have the Liberal Party, which is Justin Trudeau's party. We have the Conservatives, which are different federally than they are from each different province. Like Doug Ford's the Progressive Conservatives, and then the Federal Party is just the Conservatives. Then there's the NDP, 
which is the New Democratic Party. And that's basically if AOC and the squad and Bernie had their own party. And they're basically the same as the Green Party here. They're both the Green Party and the New Democrats are just like super far left. Uh, Everything the UN says is amazing. And they can't win. They can't win anything because they're like the only people who who want them are like young girls with blue hair and stuff like that. Yeah, little 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 commies and stuff. Wait, so did you say that you that you had like that you kind of got jammed up when you were going back into Canada from Michigan or? Yeah, so um, they didn't want us. Like the thing is that they don't tell you anything when you go into the U S like they called their superiors to see if we were allowed in. And then they're just like, the guy was like shooting the shit with us. He's like, yeah, it's out of my hand. You don't have to uh, convince me at all. (laughs) And then on the way back, they're just like, yeah, that, that doesn't exist. Sorry. Like that exemption doesn't exist. So I can't really get into it. I've probably already said too much, but uh, let's just say in like eight days, I can talk about it more. Okay. All right. We'll leave it at that then. Jesus. It doesn't sound ideal. Um, really quick though, before I forget, I wanted to, to bring up, I have, these are actually like notes. I have just like a little bit of notes. Oh, of wow. Things. Well, no, this was like, just, I was going to make like a YouTube video and I just kind of got sidetracked. I'm still, I mean, I'm just, I'm in this brand new place. I barely have any furniture. Um, I spent the last week in Wisconsin. So now I have to like restart everything, but before this, I actually wrote this down before election day, because to me, it seemed like Joe Biden had almost strategically thrown away Florida and Pennsylvania, right? All his, you know, all the, the, the Latinx, the, is it Latinx <laughs> or Latinx or whatever, um, the, uh, you know, the, the Hispanic, Cuban, Latino, uh, Dominican, I don't know, do they have Dominican, whatever, the like Latino community in in the Florida area had completely re- written off Joe Biden because they see him as a, basically as a commie. So Florida, he lost Florida months ago, right? But then when he did his whole fracking thing and Trump called him out on fracking, I was under the impression that that was it. That was it for Pennsylvania as well. Yeah. And so in my head, I'm thinking that Joe Biden, for better or for worse, is so stupid that he lost two big states like Florida and Pennsylvania before Election Day even came. And then somehow he managed to win Pennsylvania. And that just well, does add up to me. Well, when they were when he won Michigan and Wisconsin, I was like, that doesn't really matter because if Trump wins Nevada or Arizona, then he wins because the rest are in the bag. Like there was 15% left in, I think all of them, 15 or 10. I don't remember which one was which, but he had a huge lead in South Carolina, a huge, less huge of a lead in uh, Georgia. And he had a huge lead in Pennsylvania. And so like in any other race, they would have just called that. And nobody I knew was focusing on those three States because they were all so far gone. So you were focusing on Arizona and Nevada, and I was holding out hope for Nevada, and then Eric Trump starts talking about Arizona, they're going to win it. And then all of a sudden, these, these races start getting tighter and tighter overnight, and I'm just, I think I said the other day, watch by the mor- Trump's up by like 4,000 in Georgia. By the morning, he will no longer have it. And that's exactly what happened, and then little did I know he would no longer have Pennsylvania in the morning. So they can't call any of them. I don't think I'll look it up right now. I don't think they've called um, uh, Alaska for him either. And and we know though that the Democrats. Have, I mean, is it is it a surprise to anyone that the Democrats are cheating? I mean, they cheated Bernie Sanders out of a nomination twice, right? Like that's the thing. They don't even like Kamala Harris got like no votes in the primary. She didn't like, even make it to Iowa. She didn't even make it to the Iowa caucus. She she sat out a debate that she qualified for because she knew she didn't even have a, have a chance. So the Democratic voters didn't even want her, right? Like they didn't even want her. But now because people are so brainwashed by the media, they're dancing in the streets. Like what what are what are these people dancing for? Honestly, like just because they, they hate Trump, because Orange Man bad is why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't I, matter and nothing none of the facts or anything matters like i had this conversation with a girl um shout out to i won't say her name because 
Uh, she she'll be embarrassed, but um, <laughs> she just posts this thing that says, "Oh, now that Biden's won, um, I don't care if you're from Canada or the U.S. If you like Trump, you're a trash human being." And I'm just like, I can't follow you. Like, if you like, I can't be seen following people who just call everyone like garbage and shit like that. Like, I'm not sensitive like that much. But like, first of all, I don't like. I'm not following you for your opinions. I just know you, and. <laughs> But, like, I can't, like, all I see is, like, somebody, like, I'm already on a news channel where people try to, like, make stuff up about us all the time. I can't have, like, oh, Andrew follows this girl who calls people trash and pieces of shit. So, like, I'm just like, why are you even saying this? And then, so I'm questioning her on it. And then she's just like, oh, my biggest uh, problem with Trump is actually that um, health insurance companies are making it so that the pill and birth control is not covered. And I'm like, so he's a piece of shit and everyone who follows him is a garbage human being. But your biggest problem with him is that insurance companies aren't going to cover birth control anymore. Like, where does that connect happen? And like, that's how I know, like, you don't actually know what you're talking about. And she tried to tell me that Trump's against gay marriage. It's 2020. I can't believe he's against gay marriage. It's like, no, Biden's the one who is against gay marriage. And Trump is the first person to come into office campaign supporting it. So it's like, these are the people that are believing this stuff. And I don't remember yeah. what my original point was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the, it's the low information voter. I was having a conversation with somebody just earlier today. Um, and it just, just in a, in a text message. And, and she's like, well, I, I just can't believe that people, and this is a Trump supporter, a Trump supporting woman saying like, well, I just can't believe how people would support Joe Biden. And, you know, like all the crooked, corrupt things that he's done. I'm like, you're already giving them too much credit because they are not, there's, they are not looking at the facts and saying, I don't care about that. They are actively ignoring things like being willfully ignorant. Right. Like, so well, if everything to, to tells assume, you one thing, like all the, so if you don't watch any news or pay attention to any politics and you don't notice this until you no longer watch it or like you were on the other side, so to speak. It's just a different reality. It's just like, oh, everybody says that. Like, that's the popular opinion. That's what the truth is. And they can present it from the other side. I think that was the point was, um, no, I forget again. <laughs> it's just, um, it's who's all voting over. for Biden, essentially? So yeah, right now, so right now, Arizona is still not called. This is according to New York Times, everybody. 98% with Biden ahead by 17,000. Alaska still not called, and Trump is, has seventy or sixty three percent of the vote, one hundred eight to fifty six. Georgia and North Carolina still not called. Does Biden it tell you how many, uh, how many electoral votes Alaska, Alaska holds? Uh, yeah, three. <laughs> so if Pennsylvania gets overturned, which is twenty, Biden goes down to two fifty nine, and Trump goes up to two thirty four. And then North Carolina still not called with Trump winning by he's got uh, 42. My math skills, my, my girlfriend was telling me my math skills are amazing because I was subtracting numbers <laughs> on Mario Kart. Um, <laughs> 75,000 votes he's ahead in North Carolina and Georgia Biden's ahead by less or like 10,300 votes. And that's 98% reported as well. And like I knew that like. I started guessing based on how many days they had left to count, like which ones would fall. Like Pennsylvania was supposed to be counted by Friday. So I was like, well, they're going to call that. They're going to cheat in that one (laughs) first. And then North Carolina is supposed to be November 12th. So they'll buy the 12th. Oh, it'll turn out. But then if if they've already gotten away with taking uh, Pennsylvania, they don't need to cheat for anything else. So that was a smart strategy, I suppose. But I mean, some of these, there's just, I mean, okay, obviously, I don't have the proof, right? But, I mean, we're talking about both It's just not brain. believable. It's not believable. It's just not believable. And we know that these people have a history of cheating. Like I said, they cheated Bernie twice. Um, they locked Tulsi Gabbard out of the establishment. They, you know, they... Whatever they did with, um, if we recall, Mayor Pete, and because I'll be honest with you, early on when they had 20 something clowns up there talking about abortions for transgender people or whatever it is they do, uh, they, I, I thought, 
I had I had my smart money on Amy Klobuchar, which I know seems a little bit crazy. No, but a she lot was, of people did. Exactly. So, so okay. When it when it she when seemed it's, more sane at the time. She seemed she more did. sane. Exactly. Sane for a Democrat, right? And so when when the the clock is really clock is really ticking, time's winding down, and. Now, Mayor Pete drops out, Buttigieg, he drops out, and Klobuchar drops out. And it's like, why would you do that? I mean, obviously, Biden has the name recognition, but the man, even at that point, couldn't even put together a complete sentence. Now, it's, it's kind of obvious that th- th- he's the one who they can just push through. Like, he's part of the uh, their establishment, quite exactly. obviously. It's painfully obvious. It's painfully <laughs> obvious. And and like I said, Pelosi um, for months saying, well, Trump's not going to accept the results. And no matter, you know, she her little monkey paw thing and like her little, she, she like shakes and, and she's like, well, I, Joe Biden will be elected one way or another. It's like they yeah. keep saying the, the quiet part out loud. And then you realize that's why Joe Biden didn't have to campaign. Of course, they will tell you it was COVID, which to me is just another, I mean, COVID was obviously an excuse, right? To gain complete control, a complete power grab. So now you have, now you can, you can gain complete control through fear. You could tell people that they have to vote by mail, which you can now manipulate crazily. And, and you, you can, usher in these socialist policies on top of all that, right? So you could just say, well, you can't go to work, but don't worry, just we're going to we're gonna kick you a couple pennies, you know what I mean? Obviously, it just, it was just, the, the virus was such like a way to kill, you know, four birds with one stone, as far as the Democrats <laughs> were concerned, you know? It's, it's absolutely insane, and, and it drives me literally insane because I, I made a YouTube video on the after California shut down one day before New York. I believe it was either the, the 20th of March or the 21st of March. And you could, it was so painfully obvious for me. I'm like, no way. This was the last. You mean to tell me that the people that literally scratched at the Supreme Court door when Kavanaugh was being uh, confirmed, the same people that spent three years talking about Russia, dropped Russia like a hot potato and pivoted to Ukraine, now all of a sudden are telling you that you can't go to work because of a virus when the economy is the best it's ever been since the 40s or whatever it is. It was so painfully obvious that that was a way to destroy Trump's crowning achievement, which was the economy, and usher in their socialist mm-hmm. policies by saying, no, work is not safe. Just pay it, you know, just we're going to print more money and give it to, you know what I mean? It's, it was just such a mess. And, all, and at that point, I wasn't even... I didn't think it was going to drag on that long. In March, I didn't think that they were going to demand mail-in voting because of a virus. I just thought that they wanted to do socialism. But it obviously had a three-prong, you know, a three-prong uh, approach or, or th- you know, three causes or three so- solutions or three things that it did for them. And it's just so bizarre that people are still buying into this. Of course, now, now that we're seeing all the celebrations on the street, are they still going to be talking about super spreader events? Are they still going to be talking about social no, distancing? Of course not. Or is that going to come back after the, you know, the courts decide what really happened and the AP doesn't know what's going on? And then they're going to bring it back then? Well, there's a, uh, I forget what the one reporter's name is, but he has in the same day, he has a big party. It says big party at the White House going on right now. And then later in the day, college football game. This is troubling considering COVID still, like, numbers are on the rise. It's, like, literally in the same day. This guy can't show, like, he can't be reasonable about this. That's the problem. And all the uh, the journalists who are just tweeting the same thing, oh, now that, now that Trump's president and, or now that Biden's president and they're writing all these articles, uh, Kamala Harris, the first somehow black but also indian um, yeah and uh like 
race-based accomplishments is my point there that don't mean anything. And they're just carrying on, like we were saying earlier, they're just carrying on as if everything, like this is the new reality. And that's the thing about the people who are accepting this because when the only politics you're exposed to are through Snapchat, Vox, uh, late night talk shows, The View <laughs> and crap like that, they just go on with this reality. And unless you're into politics, I guess you don't see it. I don't know. I was watching a chank, the young Turks on, on oh. night and he was just talking about how the Democrats have lost. And he's like, like he, he's right. And he's wrong. He, oh. he starts off by saying how much they suck and how they don't have any real policies and how they don't talk to, like they don't care about their base at all. And with that, he's right. But on the, on the other hand, his ideas are terrible because he wants them to do like super, super progressive ideas. And the, the Young Turks were all just talking, just like in 2016, about how it's over and how they could have, they should have easily won, but they can't. And then by the next morning, Trump's lost. Like, yeah. And they, it's, it's crazy. It's so stupid. <laughs> so, okay. Let, now, okay. One thing that Biden has been talking about is a national mass mandate. And he can't. He carries his little mask like a little blankie, like, you know, like, this is my, you know, he, he walks onto stage wearing it and then takes out, it's like the virtue signaling is through the roof. But now that we see, now that we see people partying in the street, sharing champagne, literally sharing champagne, having dance parties, Cupid shuffle, all this stuff. Can he really, if he, if he actually won, can he really come out and get inaugurated in January and talk about a national man, a mask mandate? after all of his supporters were out partying in the street? Is that actually possible? I mean, yes. who are we getting Yes, it here? is. People will still follow it. People will still say, like, how horrible it is. And they'll say this is more important, just like they said with the BLM protest. They'll still do it. And the people who don't really believe in it, who don't care either way, will just not put up a fight. Oh, it's just a mask. Uh, there's no, they see no nefariousness behind it. They see no progression of, like, a slippery slope. It's just, just wear your mask, bro. What's the big deal? And then that's like two steps away from the guy wearing his mask in his car while he drives alone. Or I see people yes. on their bikes riding a bike with the mask on, like just <laughs> dodging COVID. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's actually one of the things that would trigger me the most in New York City because I'm thinking I see it all the time in Williamsburg, you know, in Brooklyn, and I'm thinking, okay, if you're riding a bike. 10 or 15 miles, you know, if you're, if you're really riding a bike pretty fast down the road with a mask on, why are you wearing the mask? Is it because you are sick and you don't want to infect somebody walking down the sidewalk? Or is it because you are that afraid of somebody on the sidewalk might cough in your direction as you're riding a bike? Like, what? None living of it makes in sense. a great fear. Especially in New York. And I said this a long time ago um, when, when I first got furloughed. And I was just exploring parts of New York City that I had never been to. I literally was just getting on the train and taking it to the last stop. And I, I end up um, walking across the Queens Bridge. You know, I was in Queens walking back into Manhattan. And it was actually a really nice day. And I see people riding their bike on the Queens Bridge. And I'm like, are, do these people really think that they are more likely to catch or give somebody the virus while they're riding 15 miles per hour on a bike? Or are you more likely to hit a a big time New York City pothole and go flying over the handlebars and bust your skull open because you're wearing a mask and not a helmet. Helmets it, it, while we're driving from now on, I think is what you're advocating for right now. <laughs> exactly. You got to proof vests at all times. It just, it, this is so bizarre though. The, the fear that they've created, they told everybody, oh, you got to, I mean, if you remember this, it wasn't even, it was what, a week or so ago. Because they've been telling, oh, you gotta, you got to vote by mail. Everybody's going to vote by mail. We're just going to blank the whole country with mail-in ballots. But then when it came crunch time, they said, oh, well, no, just just social distance and wear your mask. you got to vote in person. It's yeah, like, exactly. Who, who just walks around? I don't understand. Believing? I don't understand what the like, – I don't think people from other countries understand either. But I don't understand the, the resistance to – voting in person with an ID in the U.S. Like, I, I don't think, like, the idea that that's voter suppression is insanity. No, it, well, it's it's bizarre. I mean, right, you can't go into a rated R movie. You can't go. Does it have to do with, like, is it like a Constitution thing where, like, you can't tell me I can't vote? Just like. No, uh, it, 
I think no, it's just pure virtue. It's just pure virtue signaling. It's just, it's, it's a, it's something that they can call that they can say is racist. That's it. Of course, it's of course. A, so you could say, well, just because, just because this man just hopped over a fifty foot fence on the border of San Diego, doesn't mean he shouldn't be able to vote, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like well, yeah, kind of. That's exactly what that means, right? Like, well, here and, you get the same thing in New York. God. They get they get driver's licenses, and look, I'm from California. I'm used to like when I was young, I didn't realize, you know, that the guy at the risk of sounding insensitive, I didn't realize that the, you know, 10 or 15 guys hanging out outside the home Depot were illegal immigrants. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't understand that when I was a kid and now, now it all kind of falls into place and you no, know, it just, it doesn't make sense at all. It's just a way to, to say something's racist. That's it. I think you have to like to push for mail-in voting. You have to just like want why would you want mail-in voting if you're not certain? Maybe it's because they think like younger kids would vote if it, if it was just easier. And it's like, it's not like it's hard to go in and vote in person. But like, I'm struggling to come up with an excuse for why you would want mail-in voting because it would be so it's so easy to to, to manipulate, to cheat with it. Yeah. So here, what they do is they send you a thing and they send you your voter registration in the mail assuming they send it to wherever your driver's license is essentially it's what i gather and you have to bring that with you to vote and your photo id a government like we have health cards here don't go, don't get angry <laughs> <laughs> either that or your driver's license and if you just move somewhere and you don't have an updated driver's license you can bring a bill with your name and your address on it or something and then you have to mark they give you one of those tiny little pencils that can grade school and you got to color it in inside the cardboard that they give you you <laughs> color it in and nobody's ever had a problem with it it's election day you go it, your lo- a local school will have it a local old folks home will have polls they're everywhere and no one's i've never heard a single person complain that that was too difficult so let, let me ask you this though How, what's the what's the virus situation looking like where you are you say you're 30 minutes outside of toronto I mean, are they are they they're still crazy about the mask? You you gotta wear it while you're at the gym. Like, um, so they tried to do it by like jurisdiction, and but they they don't say like what the determining factors are. They just say this area is on the rise. Therefore, we have to. They've done it in like the stages, like uh, uh what do they call them? It's not like colors. It's like yeah, stage Stages. two. Yeah. Like right now, stage three is almost everything's open, but you have to wear a mask in like stupid situations, like unless you're eating or like not even unless you're eating. It's unless you've sat down. So you go into a restaurant, wear a mask. Once you sit down, you can now take off your mask. <laughs> At the gym, you have to wear a mask when you go in the door and you're supposed to wear it between machines. Like when you're walking between machines. But when I get there, I just wear it as soon as I get past like the key sc- scan thing. I just take it off and nobody seems to care. And when you take it off, when you're not wearing one at the gym for anyone watching, other people feel inspired by you and stop wearing a mask. Some people just look at you because they think you're crazy. He's playing with death right now. But I've seen people literally like, look at me confused. They're wearing a mask while they're working out. And then like five minutes later, they're not wearing it the rest of the time. And I was like, really inspired you. Donate I've inspired people Patreon. on Patreon too. <laughs> back when I was in New York, because I didn't. That was one. That was one thing that, I, on principle, I just was not going to do. I was not going. They were not going to tell me I had to wear a mask on the train. And I get it, like, well, because I just I didn't buy. I could see it from so, dude. It was months into this thing before they started saying you got to wear a mask everywhere. Yeah. And, and so it would have made more sense no, at the beginning to do all this stuff. It, exactly. So uh, just on principle, and I was. I would walk, I would walk past cops. I would walk past, like, I would, I was not wearing it. Like, I would put it on my chin to go into the grocery store and stuff, but I was not wearing it on the train. And I would see people, I would make, you know, catch eye contact with, like, an older lady, not like an old lady, but maybe, a, you know, 40 or 50-ish, you know? Lady That's like prime woke age right now. 40 <laughs> but, to 50-year-old she's, women are very woke right now. <laughs> she's like, she's like reading her book. And I just, you know, I'm like, I got my headphones in. I'm like probably rapping some Kanye or something in my head. 
And uh, I just, I look up, you know, look out the window, take a, you know, sip of my water. And I see the lady and she sees me. She, she goes back down to her book and then she takes it off. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, she, she was like minorly inspired by the fact that, that I wasn't wearing it. And I don't know what's going to happen to New York, man. It does feel really good to be out of there. Cause here, okay. Here in South Dakota, don't worry about it. You, you see very few people wearing a mask. Very few. I mean, I'd say like three out of 10 people are wearing a mask, right? It's not mandatory. There's no mandates. There's a couple signs that you see some signs that say, oh, the CDC recommends you wear a mask. Of course, I don't trust the CDC. And some signs will say, you know, if, you know, if it'd be nice, it'd be, you know, for, there's, there's no, there's nothing forceful about it. But then even going to, because I've already, just living here for not even a month, I've already gotten used to that. I don't have one in my pocket. I don't carry it. I, I used to keep one in my pocket in New York just for, like, emergency. Like, just, in, like, if I just had to go into, like, a, a Walgreens or something, you know, just, just in case. Um, but here, I don't, I don't have it. I don't carry it. I don't even think about the mask. But then when I was in Wisconsin... I realized that I'm not in South Dakota anymore. And the guy at one of the hotels I was at, I mean, I was doing these cruddy little, these nasty little price line deals where you pay, you know, however many dollars and they, they'll tell you where the hotel is after you pay the bargain rate. <laughs> um, and this guy, he, he, it was like something out of a cartoon. He's keep in mind, he's behind plexiglass. They have this brand new. It saves you the plexiglass. They, but, but it's, it was like industrial. So they had these, these, you know, two by fours up where, where it used to clearly just be an over the desk, you know, an over the counter uh, transaction. Now they put these two by fours up and there's plexiglass on the two by fours. So now he's in a nice little cube. And this guy looked like something out of a cartoon when I came in. I got, I just had, cause it was only supposed to be a two day trip. So I have a little bag and a bottle of water and he behind the plexiglass, like jumps back, like, sir, <laughs> sir. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, calm down. He's like, you have to wear a mask. I'm like, dude, I'm literally you're behind all this plexiglass where there's like a little slot to slide an ID under. And yeah. and he's like, You have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. I'm like, okay, like, do you have one I could I don't I'm I don't have one. If you have one for me, I'll gladly put it on. He's like, Hold on, hold stay there, stay there. And he like go runs around and, and brings me a mask in <coughs> in a paper towel. So he's Holding the I was mask gonna say, paper. yeah. Now you're both it, it dead. Just, if he hands you that, it, it just it's like. But then you go, it, it's ob, it's become so obvious to me that none of it's actually that dire. Because if it were, it would be the same everywhere. So I could yeah. drive one hour from Madison to Wisconsin Dells, and it's completely different. And I could drive from here in Sioux Falls, you know. 45 minutes into Minnesota and then now I have to put it on again. Like either that, or we'd have to wear hazmat suits everywhere. If yeah. Was that. Like, yeah. Cause the, uh, I was in the army when they, when they get uh, <coughs> tear gas, you, you're not just wearing a mask. You're not just wearing an N95 goggles. Yeah. A, a little, uh, the N95 is the one that looks like the coffee filter to me. It's like a little funny yes. one. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, a couple of my coworkers, they don't wear masks on like the subway and stuff here. And they say like once a week, somebody tries to give them shit for it. And it's like, they give okay. them like a ticket or just uh, like a no. civilian. It's just a civilian. Yeah. And there's like one of them's a girl and she's just like, congratulations for yelling at a small girl. <laughs> and the yeah. other guy and the other guy's really laid back. So I imagine he just doesn't say anything. My thing when people, if anyone asks me, which is very rare, which it, it must be like the type type of, personality or the look on my face something nobody i've been to walmart and i and me and another person are the only ones there not wearing a mask nobody says anything one yeah. woman said once that we weren't going the correct line we weren't following the lines in the aisle you're going the <laughs> wrong way the arrows actually point the other way i was like oh but um my, my <laughs> line still- is state your science it's my state yeah. your science as to why i'm harming you right now but nobody hey, ever asks me i'm gonna use that I'm going to use that for sure. I mean, of course, it's not going to happen to me here. Nobody ever said anything to me in New York, though. Like, I Because you're one, black. Yeah, well, <laughs> could be. Cannot I question. One, one lady, one little old lady. Um, I was on the J train, 
and she was ironically, or maybe I, maybe ironic is not the term for it, but for for better or for worse, she was reading the New York Times, which I just thought was kind of funny because it's obviously fake news. And she 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 was nice about it. I'm sure she meant well. She wasn't malicious. She was just like, um, sir, what, where, where's your mask? Where's your mask? And I just you know I just was like, sir, did you forget that you weren't wearing one? Yeah, and I just you know I. Because when, you, when you're walking around New York, you, you have to brush off a bum every 10 feet. And so I just kind of like, it's kind of like, no, not today. Like, uh, <laughs> so I spat on her. Yeah. <laughs> Get away from me, bitch. <laughs> but, but that's the only time anybody's ever said anything to me about it in New York outside of the grocery store. Outside of the grocery store. That's the only time. So At this point in 2020, when everything's about race. If I were you, I'd just be calling every single thing racist. Whenever something doesn't go my way, I'd just be like, no discount, racist. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they didn't fix my car in, in two hours so I could still get to the rally for racist. That's right. You didn't want me to go to that rally because I'm black. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, we should. I think we should wrap up. Wrap it up, yeah. How, we, we Inside the hour or so, just about. We're it's somewhere, I don't know. Um, well, get a flag on your wall. Get something on your wall. Get something confusing, like a mirror uh, well, behind you or something. Well, what I what I really want to do is get the because if you'll notice my old YouTube videos, I have the cityscape. The, the yeah, I like that stuff. Um, I just want to do. I'm just gonna go with the countryside now that I'm in the I'm in the or Mount Rushmore. Maybe, maybe, maybe some Rushmore. I might do Rushmore, which is absolutely epic in person. I don't know if you've ever been. But no, I haven't. That's pretty sweet. Dude, Mount Cushmore. To, Cushmore. Get all the be- most famous weed smokers in the background. Snoop Dogg and like Wiz Khalifa. Willie Nelson, I think, would have to be on there. Willie Nelson. Um, I think you have to put Burner on there now. Maybe not 10 years ago. Wow. It's crazy how big Burner is because that's very Bay Area. That's super Bay I've Area. seen him. I saw him in Toronto. Performing? Yeah, uh, sweet. Pre- Pre-COVID, I right, obviously. Pre-COVID, Busted. yes. With all the weed smoke in the air, it was yeah, so not healthy. Hopefully, we could get back to uh get back to some some concerts. We'll go go see some movies. Go you know go to a bar. Go to a dive bar. Go to a, I used to DJ. You can't see, but I have like my DJ equipment right here on the desk. Like you can't even like we were doing DJ gigs like twice a month in Brooklyn, and then they just nipped it in the butt. And I don't think that stuff's ever coming back. So. Maybe we could mm. talk about New York in more detail on, on the... Oh, for sure. I have many questions. Yeah, because that, that place is falling apart. And if you if you get me started, I could go for hours. On It'll the be mostly be based around my perceptions of New York from Ninja Turtles 1, <laughs> Seinfeld, <laughs> Seinfeld, and Batman, because I'll just assume Gotham City is at play there. Seinfeld is my favorite. Um, all right, man. Well, um, thanks a lot, dude. Um, keep me posted. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll up the production value here shortly. Very cool. All right. Take it easy, man. Later.